We're going to start looking at how to set up and use a router. Previously in this video, we cut two dados with wooden and metal dado planes. The disadvantage of cutting dados with a dado plane is that you're restricted to the size of plane for the stock that you're going to use. So you have to fit your stock to your, the dado that you cut. With the router plane, you fit your dado to the stock the other way around. We're going to use a piece of stock here to measure how wide we want our dado to be and then we're going to cut that dado using a router plane, saw, chisel, so on and so forth to get that to be precisely match this right here. Um, and we'll show you a couple different ways to use router planes to do this. Let me just say that one way to use a router plane is to set the router to the depth, for example, of a rabbit in the back of your cabinet that you want. Set the router to that depth. And use that as a marking gauge. So when I get ready to lay out my dado, I know I want it to be this deep. I can use this router to scribe the dado across the front and scribe the dado across the back. Of course, it'll be continuous to this surface here. And then I can saw and chop out my dado. And when I clear it out, it will we'll cut it down to this level right here. Another way to do that is to bring the cutter down incrementally, starting at one point and then working way through. Uh, you can do that on both, both routers here. I'm just showing you two routers set up in different ways. Uh, this one here has got a, this shoe. I don't know if you remember talking about that. The shoe is used to fill in an open-throated open -throated router here like this so that it has a, 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 an enclosed throat. This one has an enclosed throat. You can see the difference between the two. Open throat here, closed throat here. So Stanley made this little appurtenance here to give people the option of having a closed throat or an open throat router. Not exactly sure why an open throat router is so important because I find the closed ones more versatile. But anyway, this little device here can be used as a depth stop. I'm going to drop it in and set it to the depth of my rabbit, snug that down, and then set this shoe to match the depth of that post now. So that shoe acts like a stop. When I release the post here, the router will cut down until this, when this bottoms out, I know I'm down at the bottom of my cut. So let's go ahead and lay out this uh, dado, and you'll see a little bit better all the things I'm talking about here. The very first thing I'm going to do is lay out a square line across the stock where I want my dado to be. So a knife, a square, we'll go ahead and draw this in, scribe it in with a knife, get a good mark, bring the stock right up to that line so I can just, just not see that line. Come over here. Make a small prick mark, bring the square up to that prick mark, and scribe a second line. Everything between here is waste. I'm going to come through and I'm going to make this a number one cut by chopping down on the shoulders that I've scribed, dropping the chisel into that scribe line right there. Working my way down, making sure I've got a good, good shoulder right there. Not going down very deep on this first cut. Just deep enough. To make my mark, then I'm going to come back and take out a little V. 
This gives a place for my saw to rest, a solid shoulder for it to rest on. And keeps the curve of the saw below the work. Now some people, after they scribe this line, will come back through with a corner of a chisel and they will uh, slice out this V with a corner of a chisel or they might do it with a knife as well. I'm not that versatile with um, a knife, so I've never really done it that way. Uh, my friend Roy Underhill is an expert with scribing with a knife and he does it that way and gets excellent results, so I know that's a, uh, a perfectly valid method to use. It's just not the method I use, so I'm going to show you this method here. And uh, this one will work as well. The bottom line is what we're doing here is making a, a place for our saw. So this is a cross cut operation. I want my saw to rest in this groove. And I want to carefully establish a curve here. In other words, if I raise my handle, I'm liable to score the back side of the cut. If I lower my handle, I'm liable to score the front side. I've got to establish this curve flat. And then I'm going to saw down to the scribe line, which I have not actually yet scribed. Let me go ahead and do that using my router. Right there. So we'll continue to saw this. You want to saw as flat as possible. Then the other side. I'm using my hands to push my saw up against the shoulder here. Almost invariably, I find I don't really saw straight across. I saw it like this to exaggerate. So I get to the line here first, but I'm a little bit high in the middle. We'll worry about that later on when we start working with the router. So as I said, one way is to chop all this waste out with a chisel and That will happen pretty quick. Out here, you want to be careful about chopping out and going below the line. We don't want that to happen. So we'll come and put the chisel right on the, right on the scribe line there, just to make sure that that doesn't happen. This is a very quick way to get most of this work out of the way. And then we'll come through. And remember this router was set to be the, the final depth. So we'll just now over here. I'm going to come back the other way. I don't want to break out. You need to bring this up just a little bit. Because I have a depth stop here, my router won't go any deeper than the cut I've set.
So you notice the bottom is a little bit rough. And that's because we're using a cutter that's square across. If we were to use a cutter, one of the spear point cutters, we'd get more of a slicing cut all the way across. They do, in fact, have a dado that's exactly the same depth as our work and fits in there very tightly, matched exactly to our stock. We'll show one other example of the use of a router, and that's to uh, straighten up cheeks on a tenon after they've been sawn out. And let me just take a minute to get set up for that demonstration. One other task that a router is eminently suited for is to uh, flatten out or even the cheeks of tenons that have been sawn out. It's often the case that when a tenon is sawn out, there may be a slight twist this way or this way in the shape of the tenon, and we may need to average that out. And doing that with a uh, router is a very good solution. Trying to use a chisel to do this or even a shoulder plane is a little bit problematic because we tend to want to round over the edges and, uh, and uh, make a, the cheeks not quite flat. One of the first things in order to do something like this would be to set the router exactly to the layout line for the tenon. Now, it's often the case that the tenons aren't exactly in the center of the stock. And if I was to flip this over and set this line here, you can see my router does not touch the layout line on the other side. So when you're doing something like this, you'll go through and you'll do all the tenons from one side of the, say you're doing a frame, and you've got four tenons all the way around. You'll do all the one side of the tenons with the router set exactly on the line there, clean up these, then you flip them all over, reset the router to the other side, and then do all those. So let me just go ahead and do that. I've set the router to this. Which face did I set it to? I set it to this one right here. So we'll do this face first. Go ahead and put it in a, in a uh, hold fast. Uh, I might normally put a, another block of wood here to protect this material, but this being just a demo, I'm just not going to worry about that part. <laughs> Snug it down. I have another piece of wood. It's an off cut. It's the same thickness as the stock I'm cutting my tendons out of. And I'm going to use that to help balance the uh, router all the way across like this. So as you can see, as I do this, part of my tenon is a little bit high on this outside part. And I've just got that. In fact, I'm not just not touching it. I'm going to advance my, my cutter just a, just a tad. Give myself just a little bit. Make sure I get a, a nice even cut across the full width. And I'm happy with that now. So I would do that on all four tenons on that side. Flip my work over. Reset the marking gauge, or I should say the router, to that new mark. Still a little bit shy, so we'll, we'll loosen this. And I'll advance it just a little bit to make sure it drops right on that line. Snug it up. And then work on this side. Let me give that a little more of a whack. If I skew the cutter right into the shoulder, I can get that shoulder nice and sharp on that corner right there and just clean that out with the chisel afterwards. But in this way, I can guarantee that the tenon is flat this way and flat this way. No twist, 
no slope in the tenon at all. So a very useful way uh, to fit your mortise and tenon joints together. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts, and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!